I want to recommend a book first to everyone here. It's called Explaining Postmodernism, and it's by a gentleman named Stephen <coughs> Hicks. And you need to understand postmodernism because that's what you're up against, and you're up against it far more than you know or think. And it's a much more well-developed and uh, pervasive, pernicious, nihilistic, intellectually attractive doctrine than has yet come to public realization. It absolutely dominates the humanities and increasingly the social sciences in the universities. And what's happening, you see, someone once said, who unfortunately I can't remember, it might have been Friedrich Nietzsche, said that everybody is the unconscious exponent of a dead philosopher. And uh, fortunately, the postmodern philosophers, most of them are dead, so that's a good thing. But that doesn't mean that their words aren't continually being spoken by people who, who are following in their wake, let's say. And it's not like any given person is absolutely possessed, say, by the spirit of postmodernism, because often they're not educated enough to know all the details about what it is that has them in their grip. But if you get 20 of them together, and they're all 5% influenced by the postmodernist ethos, you basically have the spirit of the mob that's a mouthpiece for that particular philosophical doctrine. And if you understand the doctrine, then you understand why things are progressing the way that they're progressing. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the doctrine, um, because it's not optional to understand this. It's absolutely crucial to understand this. Uh, you, you can't underestimate the power of ideas and, and also the power of words, of course, because ideas are expressed in words. But you see, the postmodernists completely reject the structure of Western civilization. And I mean completely. So I can give you an example in one term. Jacques Derrida, who's head trickster for the postmodernist movement, regarded Western culture, let's call it the patriarchy, as phallogocentric. Okay, so fallow comes from phallus, P-H-A-L-L-O. And so that's the insistence that what you see in Western culture is the consequence of a male-dominated, oppressive, uh, self-serving society. And we might say, well, you know, societies do tend to be self-serving and people in power do tend to act in their best interests, but a tendency is not an absolute. And that's one of the things that needs to be considered continually. There are no shortage of flaws in the manner in which we've structured our society. And compared to any hypothetical utopia, it's an absolutely dismal wreck. But compared to the rest of the world and the plight of other societies throughout the history of mankind, we're doing pretty damn well. And we should be happy to be living in the society that we're living in. So the first thing that you might want to note about postmodernism is that it doesn't have a shred of gratitude. And there's something pathologically wrong with a person who does have, doesn't have any gratitude, especially when they live in what so far is the best of all possible worlds. And so if you're not grateful, you're driven by resentment. And resentment is about the worst emotion that you can possibly experience apart from arrogance. Resentment, arrogance, and deceit. There's an evil triad for you. And if you're bitter about everything that's happening around you, despite the fact that you're bathed in wealth, then there's something absolutely wrong with you. You know, the black community in the United States is the 18th wealthiest community, 18th wealthiest nation on the planet. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't such a thing as relative poverty. And relative poverty matters. It's an important, it's an important political economic issue, and it's very, very difficult to deal with. But absolute wealth matters too, and, and Western societies have been absolutely remarkable in their ability to generate and distribute wealth, as you can tell by just looking around and taking a, you know, a brief bit of consideration for the absolute miracle that even a building like this represents. So you have to educate yourself about postmodernism. Okay, so here's what the postmodernists believe. They don't believe in the individual. That's the logos part. Western culture is fell logocentric. Logo is logos. That's partly the Christian word, but it's also partly the root word of logic, okay? They don't believe in logic. They believe that logic is part of the process by which the patriarchal institutions of the West continue to dominate and to justify their dominance. They don't believe in dialogue. The root word of dialogue is logos again. They don't believe that people of goodwill can come to consensus through the, ex through the exchange of ideas. They believe that that notion is part of the philosophical substructure and practices of the dominant culture. So the reason they don't let people who they don't agree with speak on campus is because they don't agree with letting people speak. You see, it's not part of the ethos. Okay, so what else do they believe and not believe? They believe that you, since you don't have an individual identity, your fundamental identity is group fostered. 
and that means that you're basically an exemplar of your race, hence white privilege, or you're an exemplar of your gender or your sex or your ethnicity, or you're an exemplar of however you can be classified so that you, you are placed in the position of victim against the oppressor, because that's the game. And it's, it's a, it's a post-Marxist sleight of hand, right? The old Marxist notion was that the world was a battleground between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat, and that uh, failed to have any philosophical or ethical standing, that argument after the working class actually saw its standard of living massively elevated as a consequence of, of Western corporate democracy, uh, Western free enterprise democracy. And also, be, and, and also as a consequence of the revelations of everything terrible that had happened in every bloody country that ever dared to make equity and, and, and the Marxist communist dogma part of their fundamental structure, right? And nothing but murderousness and oppression. And so by the 1970s, it was evident that that game was up. The post-modernist -mar post Marxists just barely, basically pulled a sleight of hand and said, okay, if it's not the poor against the rich, it's the oppressed against the oppressor. We'll just redivide the subpopulations in ways that make our, our bloody philosophy continue in its, in, its, in its movement forward, and that's where we're at now. And so for the postmodernists, the world is a Hobbesian battleground of identity groups. They do not communicate with one another because they can't. All there is is a struggle for power. And if you're in the predator group, which means you're an oppressor, then you better look out because you're not exactly welcome Ah, not exactly welcome, and neither are your ideas. So that's what you're up against. I would say it's time for conservatives to stop apologizing for being conservatives. You know, and... <laughs> you don't apologize to these people, that's a big mistake. Apology, they read apology as, a, as, a, as an admission of guilt. You don't apologize and you don't back down. You young people that are out there who are university students, you need to take over the student unions. You need to take them back because they're absolute snake pits and they have been since the 1990s. <laughs> and with regards, with regards to the universities, I thought at one point that the best thing to do would be to cut their funding by 25% and let them fight amongst themselves for the remnants because it would force the universities to decide exactly what's important and what isn't. So I would say the humanities and much of the social sciences have, has turned into a postmodern neo-Marxist playground for radicals. The scholarship is terrible. 80% of humanities papers aren't cited once. <laughs> once. And so what that means is that they write papers for each other and they sell them to libraries and that's how the publishers make their money. No one reads them but the publishers can print them because the libraries have to buy them and they're buying them with your tax money. And so all of you who are sitting here are funding a, a postmodern radical neo-Marxist agenda that has its roots in the university and your tax money is going towards that. And if you want proof of that, you just go online and look at the websites, especially of, of disciplines like women's studies, which is pathological right to the core. But it's not just women's studies, it's all the ethnic studies groups. It's anthropology, it's sociology, it's social work, and most of all, it's education. And OISE, for example, in Ontario, is perhaps, apart from the Ontario Human Rights Commission, the most dangerous institution in Canada. It should, it should be defunded. It's as simple as that. They don't do the research they purport to do. They're not interested in, 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 at all in education. They're interested in the indoctrination of people as young as they can, uh, as young as they can get their hands on, so to speak. Now we need to figure out, our society needs to figure out how to stop shunting public tax money to radical left-wing activists. If we were doing that for radical right-wing activists, there would be an absolute storm. But it's happened incrementally since the 1960s and it needs to stop. So that's, that's partly what the, the conservatives, not only conservatives, but also liberals, true liberals in the English sense, are up against. I mean, what's happened as, also as a consequence of this postmodern neo-Marxist intellectual invasion is that the center keeps moving. It's moved way to the right now. So if you're a classic liberal, you've become a conservative. And so for all of you who are interested in pursuing the conservative agenda, there's a lot of classic liberals that you could be talking to. And then finally, with regards to talking to young people, you finally have something to sell to them. You know, It's not easy to sell conservatism to young people because they want to change things, and that's not what conservatives want to do. They want to maintain things. Well, now you've got something to sell to young people. You can sell them freedom of speech, and you can tell, sell them responsibility. 
The left is selling them rights. You can sell them responsibility. And I can tell you, because I've received many letters of the sort that, that Gad was talking about, young people are absolutely starving for someone to provide them with a sense of responsibility and say, look, here's something worth living for, man. You know, you can find meaning in life with freedom, but freedom, freedom is a chaotic sort of meaning, right? And, and freedom isn't the sort of thing that makes people happy. It's the sort of thing that makes people troublesome, troubled because um, freedom expands your, your series of choices and that makes you nervous and uncertain. So, but responsibility is another, and not to say that that's a bad thing, it's a good thing, but it, it, it requires that you that you shoulder the responsibility of the freedom, but responsibility per se is what gives your life meaning, genuine meaning in the face of suffering. And, you, and young people are really, they're starving for that. I've been teaching young people for 30 years and mostly what I've been teaching them about is responsibility. It's like you're heirs to a great tradition. It's not perfect, obviously, but comparatively, there's nothing else like it that's ever been produced, and it's, it, it represents a tiny minority of, 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 of the human polities, most of which are, 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 are run by murderous, antisocial, psychopathic um, uh, thugs. And that, that's seriously, and so what kind of alternative is that? We've got this beacon of freedom and wealth in the West that works, although it doesn't work perfectly. And one of the, one of the responsibilities of young people is to find out what's at the core of that, the, the great, great core of that, the, the, paramount, the paramount importance of the individual and the divinity of speech, man, that's something to sell. It's what our whole culture is predicated on. I thought for a while that it would be useful for the, for the, for, 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 for the political systems, people who are running the political systems, to consider doing something like cutting the funding of universities by 25% and letting them fight over the remains. And hopefully what that would mean... <laughs> hopefully that would mean that the pseudo-disciplines such as women's studies, which never had a methodology to... to, to methodology that was credible to begin with, and I would put in the same classification all the ethnic and racial studies groups that are popping up on campuses like MAD under the guise of, of, of true disciplines, which they're not in any sense of the imagination, but also, or any sense of the word, but also increasingly the social sciences and the general humanities that have been corrupted quite terribly by the postmodern doctrines. I thought, well, maybe it would be good to see if the funding could be cut for them because, because there's no reason that the, the public at large should be funding a fifth column whose aim is to disrupt the fundamental structures of Western civilization with tax money that's devoted to supporting people while they're doing that. You know, and I'd like to think about that. It'd be nice if that was a paranoid delusion. And of course, when I first started think, talking about this, the first thing that people thought and quite rightly was who the hell is this crazy professor and how many things might there be wrong with him which is exactly which is exactly what you should think when someone stands up and says hey you know this system that you guys all think is going really well and that's been going wrong, well for decades there's something seriously rotten about it that you should be paying attention to the first thing you should think of is well what makes you think you're not insane and because that is the right that is the right answer under those circumstances but it turned out at least as far as i can tell that i'm not actually insane and that the things that and that the things that I were pointing out were actually factual and what happened in Canada at least and I would say to some degree around the world was that as journalists who actually happened to be concerned about free speech generally speaking started to look into the claims that I was making about such things as the legislative policies surrounding Bill C-16 they realized that I was actually just reading what was written on the page and understanding it <laughs> instead of trying to blow something out of proportion which I had absolutely no motivation whatsoever to do but then you know I thought I thought, um, no, you can't have political interference with the universities because what happens is that, you know, you think what happens is that if you arm the politicians so that they can start telling the universities what they can and cannot teach, even with regards to funding, is then that goes seriously sideways very rapidly and you don't end up with the result that you wanted. You end up with some other result because you know how it is when you allow one organization to interfere with the autonomous function of another is that it isn't the people that you want to do with the regulating that end up doing the regulating and the things that you end up getting regulated aren't the things that you want to stop so that's not a good idea so I think I have a better idea and I think the better idea is that the postmodernists should be starved at their source and 
and I, I don't use that terminology lightly. I think that what needs to happen is that freshmen and second year university students and, and students coming into university from high school need to be educated about the postmodern cult and they need to be encouraged to not take the courses, to just drop the courses, to just stay the hell away from them. And the humanities enrollments have been declining precipitously since the 1960s and a big part of that is that, you know, why in the world would you go as a half confused high school student into university and get whatever shreds of of culture that you're still clinging to to keep your poor head above water in the sea of chaos that threatens to surround you taken away by your professors so you're stripped bare of anything but some vague sense that maybe you're a horrible racist unconsciously in some manner that you can't detect and then be left with nothing that that for your for your hundred thousand dollar investment in your bloody student loan so people are smart enough maybe not to continue to enroll in that sort of thing over time and the humanities have been being decimated since the 1960s as a consequence but it's time for that process to accelerate and so here's something cool that happened this week I think um, I, I decided a couple of weeks ago to make a postmodern lexicon and I started analyzing word use in I, I was gathering abstracts from this Twitter site called New Real Peer Review which is something that the postmodernists really hate and because, of course, what New Real Peer Review does is take actual published abstracts from postmodern humanities uh, journals, which, by the way, have a zero citation rate of 80%, and merely, <laughs> and merely republish them. And the abstracts are so reprehensible and so incoherent and so cult-like and ideologically addled that the people who wrote them get irritated when other people read them. And, you know, which is, which is a good, because the, the original, the, the real peer review, which was the first one, was shut down by people who were irritated that the people who ran the Twitter site had the unmitigated gall to actually publicize writing that was written to be publicized. It was like the, the only situation I've ever seen where authors were actually embarrassed that someone did what they could to publicize what they'd written. Anyways, new real peer review picked up where they stopped and has been publishing abstracts like mad from these crazy postmodern journals. Uh, which are journals only in name and so I started to pull out key key words well I'll tell you a little bit about that game in a minute um, I started to pull out key words that were emblematic of the let's call it the postmodern cult and then I thought I'd generate a questionnaire that that parents of university students and and late stage high school students and freshmen in university and maybe second year students could use as a guideline so they could look at the course descriptions and check off word frequency from the postmodern list and decide that if the course was part of the postmodern cult that they should maybe just not take it but then I got um, a real interesting email from a guy uh, I won't tell you his name yet but who's a computer programmer and he put together an AI system to parse apart postmodern the postmodern lexicon automatically and he set up a website now where students can feed in course descriptions of any sort and it will spit out whether or not they're postmodern and he's <laughs> And so we're developing, so the point is to get the, to get the program up to the point where it can automatically distinguish between postmodern and non-postmodern content. And then students will be able to cut and paste a course description and, and, and paste it into the analysis box on this website along with the professor's name and the course's name and the discipline and the university. And so we should be able to produce a listing of every university and every course that people are willing to participate in analyzing across North America and set up a list of courses and professors and disciplines that should be avoided. And, and so maybe we can starve them out at their source and that's what should happen.